we might not have a hundred thousand followers, but you know, still my hundred thousand follower stream. <laughs> um, let's see. We have ah, oh, it says we're offline, even though we're not. No, come on, Moobot, hook me up, grease me up, woman. We're gonna do a lot of recaps today because we're doing yesterday and today since I did the stream last night. I was gonna stream a recap last night, but I wasn't feeling well. Although I don't feel well today either. I feel all right now. Usually I feel okay at night, and then I, otherwise I don't. Uh, yeah. We're gonna be on Chess TV from nine to 11 in a few minutes. Let me refresh. There's nobody here yet except your YouTube people. It's funny, we're, it's all happening at the same time, 100,000 uh, followers on Twitch, 100,000 subscribers on YouTube is probably gonna happen in like a month or two months. And then probably in a month, I'll have 10,000 followers on, on Twitter. So we're gonna have all three happen within like a two month period. And it looks like this one's first. Yeah, um, although the stats thing isn't working yet. There we go, 99,919 followers. I think I'd rather have 99,999 than, than, than 100,000. So we need 81 followers this stream. So probably it makes sense to just not stop streaming until I get to 100,000. So that might take five hours, but I guess however long it takes, that's how long it takes. Thanks, Bradford, for the tier three subscription. Hooray. Thanks, Henry, one, subscribing. Yay. Um, all the houses are 400 plus in Roswell. I mean, not all of them, uh, but yeah. It, it depends what neighborhood. Um, you, can, you can move into a neighborhood where the houses are, you know, 400 to 700,000. But um, yeah. Yeah, Roswell and Alpharetta and Dunwoody are not cheap. Yeah. Yeah, the value of our house went up a lot in the last like five months because, you know, every house in the country went up in value. But it'll go down soon. Yeah, this isn't a good time to buy a house because the housing prices are insane. But if you wait a year, you probably get it for half the price. Farty party, 1,000 cent to do. Thank you. Right, so we're going to need 81 more followers. I get about 80 followers a day. So maybe um, if somehow we can spread the word, then we'll get some followers, you know, make some fake accounts and stuff. Yeah. All right, we got a hype train. We're starting at three. Hey, hey do me a favor real quick and just check your saturation. My saturation? Thanks, Thaddeus, for the 10 subs. Uh, let's see. My saturation looks pretty good. Oh, you mean... Uh, Let's see, properties, configure video, brightness, saturation is 88. That's like that what we had before. Turn it up a little bit. Turn it to higher, yeah. like this, but that's too high. What is the normal? 128, this is 132. And I wouldn't do it higher than normal. I'll okay. Turn it back on 128. Okay, here's 116. What is better 128? 128, mm -hmm. all right. There's also the brightness to get it to 128 because my I'm, I'm not a fingersmith although karen may beg to differ but 129 how's that it's just too hard sure that's what she said yeah that looks better that's better I'm what maybe because i'm pale <laughs> yeah maybe i'm an ale uh yay 100,000. okay christian chamberus or something gifted a sub thank you bordorf subscribed yeah Man, Shanklin's playing great, and his analysis is great. Usually his analysis, when he, after the game, everything he says is wrong. Everything he says is right. I guess that's why he's winning. Hey. Can I get a Perrier? And careful, because I noticed there was almost none in the big fridge. That's going to be full. Was it full? I haven't looked at it. Um, it should be, because they, they took... I mean, that fridge had a lot of Perrier, and now it has none. Okay. Is it cold? Yeah. <sighs> Yeah, I had a story to tell people, but I'm going to wait till after all the chess is out. Mm -hmm. Also, you got to wait till on chess TV so everybody can hear you. It involves me cursing somebody. Duh, else. Bears. Thanks, Duh, Bears. Yeah. At the chess club. Yeah, let's get like a million subs and bits and donations because it's the 100,000 stream. Thaddeus can attest to what a rough okay. crowd we are over here. Mm -hmm. Sam so slick subscribe. I didn't tell you this because I forgot, or I did tell you and I forgot that I told you. Thaddeus, uh, Thaddeus, C.L. Smith was streaming yesterday and I rated him 
And he said the best part of his trip here was coming to our home and playing ping pong and pool. Aww, that was the say. best. The best, Jerry, the best. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's, you know, trying to, you know, pump us up. But yeah, still, yeah. I'll take the compliment. Uh, Spotted Frog 234 subscribed. Yay, go hype train. We're going to have like 3,000 viewers at some point because we're going to be on Chess TV in less than five minutes. What are Sam's chances now of winning the event? Yeah, like 0%. But um, if he gets to the final, it'll be like 33%. Yeah. So he has to win two more matches, then I'll give him some chances. Lots of Although actually, if he, if he beats Karyakin, he has good chances to make the final because he's probably going to play Fedoseyev. He's beaten Fedoseyev before. Tons of subs. Yeah, old lawyer dude gave 10 subs. Thank you. Sam's playing great. This is the best I've ever seen Sam play. The reason he's playing great is he's very objective, which wasn't... He, he was an objective in the past. When he's worse, he says, I'm worse. When he's better, he says he's better. When he's lucky, he says he's lucky. When he has a worse position but defends great, he says that. And that's all true. He's the only player, I think, who hasn't lost a game in the whole event. I, don't, I think nobody else has not lost a game. Obviously, if you're out, you lost a game. Uh, although, not, I guess technically you could have drawn all your games and drawn with White and the Armageddon, but that didn't happen. And the people that are left, I know they've lost a game because I remember them losing games. It's amazing Tabatsebe is still in. And it's uh, Fedoseyev, what pairings he's getting. He's not playing 2700s. Fedoseyev, other people in his situation have played, you know, 2700s. And he hasn't. Yeah. Yeah, Karyakin's tough. Fedoseyev is going to be tough. And Magnus is going to be tough. Even if Magnus doesn't make it. I mean, Magnus should beat Bakro. So I'm guessing Magnus, Duda, Karyakin, and Fedosev is the final four. And Duda could beat Magnus, but Magnus is a favorite. I don't think Bakro can beat Magnus. Bakro's old. But, you know. I mean, I, I would, that would be like the most shocking if Bakro beats Magnus. Bakro's like 10 years past his prime. God damn. <clears throat> Yeah, Fedosev is good, but when Fedosev plays Karyakin, he may not be as good. Fedosev could win the event. He's dangerous. God damn. Sam Shankland was over 2,700 years ago, like 2018. Then he had a really bad 2019. He had personal issues, which he talked about. His rating plummeted. And then COVID, and now he's back. Guess who's back? COVID's good for, for Shanklin's chess. And the reason is Shanklin's main strength compared to the other 2700s is his prep. Some people need to play a lot of chess, like me. If I don't play chess for six months, I, I, I can't play. I couldn't play anyway, but then I really can't play. Shanklin, it doesn't matter for him. Shanklin needs to study chess 10 hours a day. So with COVID, Shanklin could study chess 10 hours a day. So he got better. Other people said I haven't played in a year and a half and I touched the pieces, you know, nonsense. So, yeah. All right. Yay. Thanks for whatever you guys did. Yeah, we'll check every few minutes to see if I'm getting close to the 100,000. It looks like we got 10 followers since I looked last, or maybe it's the same and I'm dumb, which is, I guess that's more likely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if, uh, if GMs would sweat. I sweat when I play blindfold because I'm so big. And usually when I'm playing blindfold, I dress up because it's some kind of occasion. So I sweat when I play blindfold, yeah. I'm sweating now. But I have Perrier. Hooray. Frankly, delicious. Why do I hate London so much? What, what's not to hate? It's super expensive. It's super bad weather. Um, the food's terrible. If you go to a British restaurant, you have to go to like, you know, some other kind of cuisine. There's terrible traffic. It takes forever to get anywhere. Um, people who live there are British. I can't, I don't, I don't see anything good about it. Sorry. I've been to London like, you know, eight times. But yeah, it's obviously, Indian food's okay. Indian food's better in the U.S. now. Probably Indian food was better in London like 30 years ago than the U.S. Now the U.S. has better Indian food. But, uh, yeah. 
that's one of the redeeming qualities of London is it has a lot of people from different countries, which I like. But uh, yeah. Basically, you, you, if you want to really understand why I don't like London, you have to watch the movie Snatch. Then you'll know. Anything to declare? Yeah, don't go to England. Yeah. I mean, the people, the people in the government are really stupid. And, you know, the, 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 the uh, affinity to soccer is stupid. So when I say the affinity to soccer, I don't mean liking soccer and rooting for your team. I mean the insanity. So the only question is, are they more insane about soccer in England or are they more insane about cricket in India? Obviously, it's cricket in India, but I'm just pointing that out. Yeah, a friend of mine, I guess I won't name him so he doesn't get ostracized from the community, who's Indian and a grandmaster, uh, he said, he said, I, I hate that about India, that everybody loves cricket so much. He says, I like cricket, but it can't be that your whole life is cricket. He thinks people like cricket like a hundred times more than they should. <laughs> That's the one thing that upset him. <laughs> Yeah, no, I understand liking sports, but, you know, all right. I also understand not liking sports. See, I, I'm from Detroit. So, you know, year in and year out, we suck. So it's hard to like sports. Tigers are bad. Pistons are bad. Red Wings are bad. Lions are bad. And sometimes those teams are the worst team ever. You know, like the Lions are 0-16, and I think... Two or three years ago, I don't know when it was, the Tigers lost more games than any team ever. You know, they're just terrible. Obviously, you can pick and choose certain years where the teams were good. In fact, I could do that right now, but you know, not now. Boo, boo, etc. So, yeah, you're from Cleveland. Yeah, the truth hurts. Yeah, Cleveland's motto is at least we're not Detroit, and Detroit's motto is at least we're not Cleveland. Truth hurts. Yeah, sort of like Alabama is, at least we're not Mississippi. No. Yeah, but Brazil's good at soccer. Oh, snap. Yeah, the episode in The Simpsons where they go to Brazil is funny. Because when they get to the hotel, the baggage uh, people are, like, playing soccer with their luggage to kick it into the, the thing, you know. Yeah, that's funny. Toledo, go Toledo. Go Guardians. Yeah, which cities do I like? Rome, Amsterdam, Paris, Prague. Um, I liked when I was in Slovenia. I mean, Marabor obviously isn't, you know, not a world city, but I was only in Ljubljana like for like, you know, two, three hours. But I did, I did just like Slovenia. That was awesome. Um, I assume Istanbul is great, but I haven't been there long enough. I was there twice for like a day. And I love Dubai. Yeah, there's cities I like a lot, but London's not one of them. Yeah. I don't like New York either. The, the, the bad things about New York and London are similar to me. Like I like Chicago more than New York. Yeah. Man, there's not a lot of U.S. cities I like. Like, yay, I'm in that city. Hmm, Chicago. <sighs> Vegas. I like Vegas. San Diego was nice. Yeah, San Francisco is nice. I had a really good experience in San Francisco at an Indian restaurant. I... I was telling them how good the food was and that I'm a connoisseur of Indian food and the chef came out and they just brought me free food. They're like, try this, try this, try this. And trying was the first step to failure, but th there was no failure. It was amazing. Yeah. Budapest was okay, but I, I wasn't there long enough to know. And it was before you guys were born. All these cities probably changed because I'm old. So 25, 35 years ago, you know, I don't know. Shanghai was nice, except it was 1 billion degrees. If, if it was like between 60 and 80 in Shanghai, that would have been fine. But it was, it was not. 
God damn, it was hot. God damn. Tulsa's the best. Yeah. Uh, ever been to Turkey? Yes. Uh, U.S. Championship in Tulsa. What river goes through Budapest? Don't you have the internets and you can find out in one second? Yeah, terrible. 200 centages from Curious Chimpanzee. It has to separate Buda and Pest. Remember, it's Pest. Brussels was nice, I agree. Yeah, Brussels was good. I wasn't in Berlin long enough. And when I was in Berlin, I was in West Berlin. That's, that's when I was in Berlin. You hear me talking? That's how long ago it was. <laughs> I've been to uh, London, Hastings, and Oakham, which you've never heard of in, in England. I want to go to Scotland eventually because I heard it's great. But I probably don't want any haggis unless it's vegan. Okay. Um, I'll let you guys decide, although I'm actually going to decide. But I'm hoping you make the same decision as me. I played an extra rated game tonight that was very suspicious against a 1500 or 1400, 1500. I think he's 14 something. Um, it's a kid. He's like 12. And... I also have World Cup games. Which would you like to see first? World Cup games or the game that I played tonight that was game 90? I just finished the game like 40 minutes ago. My parents are anti-vaxxers. What do I do? Well, your parents were probably vaccinated when they were kids. They probably had a lot of vaccinations. Maybe they forgot. So if your parents are anti-vax, then they're anti-vax. And we can do you could tell them you don't agree and you would prefer that they don't get sick because, you know, they're your parents. And, uh, you know, that's, what are you going to do? People do what they do. I don't like telling people what to do, even if, it's, if it leads to something bad. People lead their own lives. And if your parents want to lead their own lives in a way which is very dangerous to them and others, then, you know, Sorry. Yeah, you can't you can't pick your family, but you can pick your friends, and you can pick your friends, and you can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose. So there you go. Yeah. Etc. What do you think of MVL's performance? Pretty good. Yeah, MVL played pretty well, I thought. Yeah. Uh, start with Magnus. Bill Cosby could pick his friend's nose. I don't get it. LV20 SWD subscribed. Good. Good. Yeah. Oh, we have a poll. All right. I heard Poland's nice. All right, my extra rated game is winning. That's the one I was going to show first. Get that out of the way. Yeah. After you see my extra rated game... You will know why I'm not playing in the World Cup. <laughs> I should be playing in like the C section or the D section of some tournament. Uh, let's see. Is this how you do it? Yeah. Okay. So my opponent's name, this is not a joke. No matter how many times I say this is not a joke, about 30% of you are going to think this is a joke. <laughs> my opponent's name was COVID, but with a K. I've played him before. I, I've taught him too. He's been in my classes at schools three, four, five years ago. Um, his whole family plays chess. His, his dad and his brother and he are all between like 1350 and 1700. Um, and I've played them all rated chess. And, and Karen's played the dad like 10 times. and They've been friends for 10 years. But yeah, his, his name's COVID. Yeah. Um, but it starts with a K, not with a C. Um, also, YouTube has a newish thing. I think it's newish, where you put up shorts on YouTube and they're 15 seconds or less. And Karen likes that. So Karen put up two of the shorts in the last like hour. Um, and one of them is I'm playing COVID and she, she got a video of it. And then YouTube suggested play this music. And then she's like, okay. And they had some stuff. And then it said, if you play this music after she, she did it, then you can't get monetized. After they told her to play the YouTube music, then they said, you can't get monetized. So then we made another one where I'm just sitting here, and that was like nine seconds. Nine! And that one will be monetized. We'll get, you know, one cent or something, or two cents. 
Yeah. Anyway, his name is COVID, and also his brother Demon and he, I think, are on my stream a lot, and they've played in a lot of my tournaments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. COVID. Yeah, he was named COVID before you were born. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's have a look at my game with COVID. Um, <clears throat> I, I didn't play well. <laughs> okay, so this was game 90. The game took about an hour, I guess. Yeah, the game took about an hour. I decided to play bishop f5, which I, I used to play a lot, but I don't play it now. And this is all normal. Bishop f4 is very unusual. Um, so that's, I'm already sort of out of whatever prep I have. Uh, you know, from 30 years ago. Okay, he played knight f3. And now I played super aggressive. The engine agrees. Bishop b4. Okay. And he played even more aggressive than I did. Queen a4 check is fine. And knight e5. Okay. Rook b8, take, take, take. Trade queens. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy engine line. Rook b8, knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes. Queen d7, queen takes, king takes, equal. All right. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, the engine wants me to go here and do this. My rook defends my bishop. And then it says this is equal. All right, I don't know, I guess. Okay, I wasn't playing for equality. Okay, so I castled. He took, I took on c3, which I have to do. I, I also could move my queen here, I think. But I just thought it was better to let him, you know, play aggressive and I could play aggressive and I'll win quick. Um, in fact, the engine wants me to take, which is what I did. I thought queen c6 was ill-advised, but the engine says queen c6 is the best move. And I saw this when I played bishop b4, and I thought, well, I'm going to attack, and his king is on e1, so he's in trouble, but the engine does not agree. I played queen b8, that's the engine move, I want to go here. So it's funny, the two engine moves, one of them I didn't look at. I looked at queen b5, and the other engine move is bishop c1, stopping this. The engine prefers white after bishop c1. It prefers white? Wow. I don't know about that. This is the best move, according to the engine. What? <laughs> that doesn't seem good. And Black has like 10 tempi ahead in development for a doubled pawn. You see what I'm saying? Bishop C1 is the best move. God damn. Gotta learn chess, I guess. Wow. Somebody give Cleve a sub, he asked. Well, it stops Queen B2. All right, we're in 55 followers away. It looks like we're going to hit 100,000. Make sure you everybody donates $1,000 once we get to the 100,000. That could be my last stream. Okay, hopefully you're watching the World Cup commentary every day. It's going to be me and Danya the rest of the week. Friday, I'm doing the end of the commentary. I think Ifan is doing the beginning. And then I have to leave early, unless the round ends early, because I have to fly to New Jersey for the state senior championship or something. Um, and then Anand is going to do commentary the last three round, the last three days. It'll be Anand and I don't know who Danny or Danya or has. I don't know. Uh, Rhino Blast subscribed. He'll be like August third, fourth, fifth, or fourth, fifth, sixth, something like that. Yeah. Rhino Bliss. But I'll be on tomorrow and Thursday, the whole the whole round. And then Friday, the end of the round. Until I get, go to the airport. Yeah. No, Donnie and Hess are really good, both of them. Yeah. Okay. So now the engine says Queen B5 is better than this when it gets to depth 29. That's what he played. Okay. And... I played DC pretty quickly. I played pretty quickly after bishop b4 because I had seen this was coming. The engine wants me to move my queen away and not trade queens. Okay, and I think he should trade queens. I think queen c4 is not good. We'll see if the engine agrees. Yeah, queen c4 is not even a move. a4, queen takes b8. a4 is weird. But... All right, so he took. 
And yeah, I thought I had really good compensation for a pawn, and I thought he shouldn't take my pawn. I can't understand why rook f takes b8 is better than rook a takes b8. I knew when I played rook takes a, rook a takes b8, there's going to be some reason why the engine said the other move is better. But actually looking at it now with the engine, I, I'm looking at the analysis, I don't know why. I have no idea why. Oh, now I know why. Of course. You know, during the game, Kieran, this is, the, I mean, this isn't too complicated for me, but maybe it is. So I can take the queen either way, right? And the reason I should take with this rook, which I did not do, mm -hmm. is because later when I attack his bishop, um, he could play bishop d6 attacking my rook, which he did. But if I take with this rook, he can't do that. I'm not sure what you're saying. See the bishop here? Mm -hmm. After I take this, and he takes this, and I go here, which is the game, except my rook was here. Because oh, I took with the other rook. Okay. Then he played bishop d6 attacking my rook and bishop a3. But bishop d6 doesn't attack my rook. Oh, yeah, that's what happens when I'm, I'm not taking 10 minutes and move, and I'm like, oh, I'll win, he's 1400. So I played this, and when I played it, I was like, if rook fb8 is better, mm -hmm. I wonder why. And then it is better, and now I don't wonder why. Okay, now I thought this was a very bad move, but it's fine. Yeah, the best move is f3 threatening e4. Because if he plays f3, e4, I'm lost. My pawns are all hanging. He has the two bishops. He has the fatals. Okay, this is also good. Bishop takes c7. I played rook b2, which I assume is correct. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, you know, knight e4 is coming. Knight d5 is coming. He has no development. He'll never castle. His c3 pawn's weak. So I have great compensation for a pawn. And the engine agrees. Yeah, the engine says this is fine. So he played the best move, but never play it. F3. And now I thought a long time. I thought, I don't know. This is my longest think of the game. Probably half of my thinking time in the game was on this move. I didn't know the consequences of knight d5. But in my opinion, any other move was just bad. So I'd rather be confused than have a bad position. Actually, I was right. That is the best move, and other moves are bad. Bishop b1 is the second best move, but I didn't look at it. Because then after e4, my bishop is out. That makes sense. Okay, so I played knight d5. Now, of course, if my rook is on a8, bishop d6 does nothing. But now bishop d6 attacks my rook. This is the COVID game? Yep. Now you guys believe I played COVID, because you just said it. Mm -hmm. Then somebody said COVID is an Indian name with a K. That's mm -hmm. standard. David RV subscribed. Didn't I get 17 months yesterday? I hope so. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, this is, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm getting close to 100,000, by the way. I, I've gotten like 30 followers this stream so far. Yay. I figure I'll stream till I get it. I'm not going to stop with like that yet. Uh, yeah, I've I gotten like 40 followers or 35. Yay. So I'll get to I'll get What's to our that. count? That's the count. 99954. Now, seriously, mm -hmm. which is more important? Mm -hmm. 100,000 or 99,999? Well, output says we should stop at 99,999. How do we stop? <laughs> <laughs> no, bishop d6 is the best move. Now the engine wants me to sack the exchange. Oh, no, this is the second best move. So I played rook d8. I thought about playing rook c8 to defend this pawn, but you know, I didn't like it. See, the idea is if he plays e4 forking me, I have knight e3, and I'm threatening knight c2 check. However, if he plays bishop a3 attacking my rook, and I want to keep my rook active, and I play rook c2, which I did, now e4, I don't have knight c2 check because my rook is on c2. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so that's why I played this, and my intention was, and I analyzed all this when I played knight d5, <clears throat> but the engine doesn't like it. Actually, it just says it's complicated. Yeah, here, rook c2, e4. And now I made a very bad move, and then he made a very bad move. Okay. And then I made a bad move, and then he made a worse move. I knew that he was mm -hmm. giving you some trouble because you were you know, in a deep, th deep think. 
Mm -hmm. So here I'm already in trouble. The move the engine gives, I didn't consider it at all. I didn't even look at it. Rook takes c3. He has a big advantage. The second best move mm -hmm. is to sack my bishop here and then take this. But I just took this. And now he made a very bad move. Then I made a very bad move. Then he blundered and I was probably winning. So he needs to take this because mm -hmm. then he's up a piece. And I hadn't decided whether to take back or play here. If I take back, I'm threatening checkmate. I mean, it's not checkmate, but it is. And I thought he had to go here. And then I thought I would go here. And the engine says this is good for him, but I thought this is too hard to play white. Um, so this is the engine line here. Rook takes g2. I mean, he's up a piece here, but his position looks ridiculous. But he's up a piece. <clears throat> but, you know, I can go here and I can check. And his rooks are ridiculous. Problem is my king doesn't have any, you know... Yeah, so like rook here, I can't move my knight because I get mated. Mm -hmm. I could play rook d3. So the engine's saying that white's winning in this position, but this looks like if the engine's not telling you, then you're like, ow. I mean, his position looks absurd, mm -hmm. but I mean, he's a piece up. So there's only one mover he's winning, only one. Otherwise, he's not winning. Mm -hmm. So that's he has to play here, stopping rook f2 check. Oh, okay. Yeah, now my counterplay is mainly gone because, you know, I could take pawns, I can push pawns, but okay. Yeah, this is this is winning for white, but I can't imagine losing this position because it's he'd have to play like, you know, 10 perfect moves. Like, it's really hard to extricate this. So that's why I played this line because I was confused, and I said that's better than being lost. <clears throat> also, other than taking, I can play rook takes d4. Um... And then, again, I'm down a piece, but he can't move anything. Like, if he plays rook c1 to, get, like, get rid of the pressure, that just loses a piece. So I'm winning now. Okay. So it's just very hard to play white. The engine's like, I want white, <laughs> but... I mean, if two people were playing and they were under 2,000, I would think that black would do better than white. I think it's just too hard to play white. Mm -hmm. If two super GMs are playing, then I'll take white. But I mean, like the engines, like takes, takes, h4, h5. What the hell is h4, h5? What's that got to do with, you know, got to do, got to do? What's h4, h5? But a second hand emotion. Mm -hmm. Terrible. Yeah. Hey, I'm a toy dragon. Thank you. Anyway, that was my understanding was it was too complicated. I didn't understand what was going on. Mm -hmm. I figure if I don't and he doesn't, that's good for me. Now, here he played a very, very, very strange move. Mm -hmm. Hey, Barack Obama. He, he didn't take my bishop, he played here. You know, he wants to castle. Um, okay, now I should take this, which I didn't look at. And the idea is if he takes, I said if, now I'm winning. And now if he plays like, he has to castle here and give up his bishop. Yeah, if he plays here, his bishops are in Forktown. Mm -hmm. So that's bad. Um... Why can't he play bishop d3? Oh, I play rook d2. Yeah, so I check. I go here. And if he goes here, I have rook d2, I guess. Yeah. And now I'm just winning. It says plus 1,000. So he has to... So wait, why can't he play like a normal move? Let me see. Oh, it, oh I didn't see rook f4's mate. King, king here's mate. And king g1 is mate. Anyway, I made the right practical decision of playing this insanity because, you know, what's he going to do? Going to calculate better than me? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so I should have played bishop e4. And then it says that he should castle there. And then it's like, why isn't it playing bishop e4 anymore? Yeah, it says he has to castle. And then bishop d5 and black is slightly better. Equal material, I have a better pawn structure. Yeah, this is really good for black. Yeah, I, I like black here. Okay, so I played rook takes d4, which is a mistake. <coughs> Excuse me. I just assumed after here, here, that this is really good for black. And the engine says white's better. <laughs> I mean, like, the rook is trapped. My rook's on the seventh. This rook is good. Shallow and pedantic. I would assume black is doing great here. But the engine says it's not. It says white's better. God damn. 
Do you know how scared I would be if I was white here against anybody like my own rating? I would just think I'm going to lose right away. But the engine says, I can defend perfectly. Okay, so now he made the final mistake, except he made more mistakes later. But this is the move where I'm probably winning. He, he took my bishop, and then I took his bishop, and now I'm winning. Material's equal, and his position's ridiculous. Yeah, and now he, he started blundering. Uh, Mustachiola subscribe. Time trouble. Now we're playing fast. Yeah. That's why I thought so. He's a yeah. fast player. Actually, it says his move is okay. It just says he's lost. He should castle, but he played here. And then I sneak in the swish and zook. Yeah, and here he thought forever, and he made like a, a double question mark blunder. And I thought the only good move was rook here, and the engine says some crazy move your h pawn. What? Let me see what I'm supposed to do against that. Okay, I was I thought about that, but then I was worried what to do about this. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah. All right, then he resigns. Oh. Okay, so he's just dead lost here. He blundered a piece here. He played rookie one after a very long thought. Mm -hmm. My original idea was just to take this winning, which does win, but this wins a piece. Takes, takes, and then either knight b1 or knight b5. Threatening here. He can't move this leaf c1. So if he plays bishop b2, I play here, and he still can't leave c1, but okay. And then the only variation I analyzed was this one, and then I win his rook. So after knight b5, he can resign, but he played on forever down a piece. <clears throat> hey, no queen, how's it going? And then he resigned here. That game was, was pretty interesting, considering he's like 14-something. However, he went to the World Open that we went to, and he was rated 1,200, and he gained 200 rating points. So if I gained 200 rating points, you guys would think I'm good again, but that's not going to happen. Thanks, Bishop Takes, for all the subs. Five subs. Hey, Indo Queen. Thanks, Mustachiola. But anyway, that game was really interesting for an extra rated game. A lot yeah. of tactics and complications. Definitely. And I was right that it was complicated, and I thought maybe I'm in trouble. And I was right. But I just didn't like anything else. I figure I'll have it complicated. And even positions where he could have played differently and I thought were really good for me, it's good for him. So that was too hard. But yeah, obviously I can't, I can't play my usual slow, boring game because I have to stream. The game... He, he had a buy, and there was nobody here to play him, and Karen was going to play him, but Karen didn't want to play. Karen is busy. So I said, well, I'll play him. And the game started like 7.20, and we have to finish so I can stream. So I, I can't take more than an hour and a half. I got to you know, get it going here. So if I had taken like 45 minutes that game, and he took more than 45 minutes, I would like miss chess TV and stuff. And I had to prepare my lecture. So I play sort of fast, so I can you know, make sure that I make the make my stuff. I got one board left. How many rating points did I gain? 0 0.0001. Did Spencer win? He's still playing. He's the only game? Yeah. Huh. What's the position like? I haven't even been up there. What happened on the other boards? I want all answers. <laughs> can you bring the results in when they're done so I can see? Yeah, but we're yeah, going to yeah. write the tournament. Well, actually, well, also good. Actually, John's leaving, so I'll probably write it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes, gifted a sub. Hooray. We don't have 100,000 followers yet, but we have 99,966. So we are going to have it before the stream ends. It's going to happen during the stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's see. Do you ever gain rating points playing in Georgia? No. I just play extra rated games if somebody has a buy and Karen doesn't want to play them or she's already playing somebody. And half the time they don't want to play me. And half the time they're like, yay, fine gold. So I've probably played 40 extra rated games since we opened. And I've played in some tournaments too here, but not, not too often. Yeah, I don't like to play when I have to also be the tournament director. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll get to some you know serious chess. Hey, Bishop Takes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My commentary is awesome. I'm the best at something. I'm not sure what. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 99,968 followers. We need 32 more. Or 31 more for all nines. 
Okay, now this position, white is slightly better because white has sort of a bind. It's hard for black to do anything, right? If, like if I said, what should black do? I'm like, I don't know. Black just sits there and hopes that white can't win. Now, one of my big weaknesses um, when I was getting coached by Kaidenov in the early 90s, according to him, was I was impatient and I was always changing the position instead of slowly improving the position. And if you look at a lot of Super GM games, they play a lot of slow improving moves. And if you look at the games people are losing in the World Cup, it's because they're doing something that's not good instead of building. Yes, or Sarah on like, Magnus is always building. Okay, so Magnus looks like its position's like sort of boring. And the engine says it's about equal. It prefers white a little bit. And like Popeye, S Yesipenko had all he could stands. He didn't stands no more. Mm -hmm. And he just went crazy. Now, sometimes super GMs do that when they think their position sucks. They're like, well, if I play boring and pedantic, I'm just going to lose. So let's play like a lunatic. But that's not the case. As you can see from the engine evaluation, Black has, you know, Black's top two moves are just like boring, right? And those moves are queen e7 and h6. They don't do anything. And Black started doing stuff, and that didn't work out. Then he had to resign. He tried, but he failed miserably. And this was the first decisive game of the match. Before this game, they had all draws. Um, queen a3, yeah. We cannot see the engine analysis. Good. Yeah, you're not supposed to. Yeah. Ben's told by producers what to talk about. Incorrect. <laughs> Nobody tells me what to do ever except Karen. All right. So, I mean, when I'm on chess TV, I swear like a sailor, right? I say Danny Wrench is the worst. You think I'm being told what to say? Danny Wrench is on vacation, by the way. He's like, he's gone for a week. Oh, yeah, I know about it. Yeah. And he was like, I was watching. Okay. He's still answering emails. Right. Well, yeah. Okay, so he played knight e4, which is very bad. But he just, he couldn't, he was like, ah. Okay. And then black, white could take a pawn, queen takes, but he has a trick. It's not really a trick. It's just a simple trick, which is queen takes, bishop takes. You can't take with a pawn because your bishop's hanging. Take with the queen, you undefend c6. And the engine says, you know, equal, white's a little better. Okay, so Magnus didn't want the guy to take the knight, so he played knight d7. And Magnus is hoping for rook e8, and now white's a pawn up because you can't take that knight. And this is defended. The knight can go back here later. And the engine says white's a pawn up. It says black has some compensation, but not enough. Okay, now Yesipenko obviously watches my stream a lot. So he always... Sacks the exchange, plays f5, defending his pawn, letting Magnus take his rook. Okay. <clears throat> now, black has a bishop and a pawn for a rook, and he's got some nice center going there, right? And then Magnus put it in Magnus mode. Yeah, unfortunately for Yesipenko, these are positions Magnus excels. He has a material advantage, and he has to stop his opponent's counterplay and improve his position slowly, now Magnus is going to play like an engine. So that so that first he tried to sack a pawn, then he sacked the exchange, and now the engine just says he's lost. So he was too aggressive. He could have just played chill, been a tiny little worse, and he was like, rawr, I'm Yesipenko. And the director's like, quiet. <clears throat> Let's see. Just a second. Let me answer your question. Mm -hmm. Bam. <laughs> yeah you know it's funny maybe the reason bishop f8 is better in this position is always play bishop f8 maybe he doesn't watch my stream and actually white wants to trade bishops yeah i don't know the engine says everything's bad i'm at death 22 it says they're both terrible it doesn't say king takes okay so bishop f4 is excellent because this bishop, it's not doing a lot. Um, so if they trade these bishops, that bishop's sort of just sitting there. So that's not good. And in this position, after bishop f4, uh, black made another mistake. Black has to take this 
G takes F, Rook D8. And, you know, White's probably winning with correct play. But at least we have a G file to the king. This pawn could be attacked. If White plays E3, which is the engine move, Black can hope in the next 70 moves to get his bishop here. It's not a good hope. 999. Thanks, Panorama. And the engine says White's winning. But it's still better than what he did. He played Rook D8 right away. Bishop E5 is an excellent collinear move. The bishop just sits there forever. And if you take the bishop, we get the open D file. White's rooks need open files. We need that. And if you don't take the bishop, that's a really good bishop. And in this position, again, black needs to chill, okay? He has to be like Fonzarelli. And what's Fonzarelli? Cool. Correcto mundo. So black has to do nothing here and just wait and hope that white can't breach the, you know, and instead he just, he lost quickly. And he was very impatient this game, yes, Sipenko. He was always doing something and the things that he did, which changed the position, they were all bad. So Magnus won very quickly. The engine says, make a boring move that does nothing, but he took. And now we have an open file, which is why rooks are better than bishops in the end game, because the bishop can only control half the board and the rook can go everywhere. The, the, the bishop is limited. H6, giving him the D file, terrible. Yeah, I mean, just he won so easily. Okay, now he played queen b4, hoping Magnus would come in here and then he would play queen e1 check and win. Counterplay. And this is why Magnus is so good. Because I was taught by Kaidanov, you always stop your opponent's counterplay. And I guess Carlson was taught by Kaidanov also. Do you know why Carlson was taught by Kaidanov? Uh, no. Kaidanov is the U.S. senior champion. Oh, okay. Pretty good. Now, let me, let, me, let me say something. During the broadcast of the U.S. senior championship and on Twitter, I read over and over and over again and heard over and over, this is Kaidanov's first national championship. Now, I'm not saying that's wrong. However... I consider the U.S. Open a national championship because it is. And I played in the U.S. Open, the Kaidanov won. So he won the U.S. Open in 1992. I tied for second. That's not a national championship winning the U.S. Open. It's, it's a USCF national event. I guarantee it. So they wrote like a million times. Now, Kaidanov's played in like 23 U.S. championships and he's never won. So I understand, but he's won the U.S. Open. So. All right. Um, yeah, did we get 100,000 followers yet? Let's see. 99,973. 99,975. We're getting there. Okay, what game is this? It says what game it is. It's Carlson. Okay. Now, th now, th now this is a great chess lesson. Okay. This is a this this is this, <clears throat> you, this part you is gotta pay me for this. Okay. okay. So black sack the exchange. Can you go back just a couple? Of I minutes? can go back as far as you want. I don't know. Where else. All right. So I'll show you when he sacked the exchange. In this position, he played knight e4, which is bad. And Magnus took. And I was given the variation if Magnus takes this, bishop takes is okay. okay. So Magnus played knight e7 attacking the rook. If the rook moves, then I'm just a pawn up. So black sack the exchange by keeping this nice center. I saw his brother keep Right, and then, he, and then after here he should take it, although it's still bad. That Magnus played a really nice move, bishop e5. And black played a terrible move here. The rooks want open files. There are no open files. And yes, is like, don't worry about it, and plays here, giving Magnus this open file. Oh. Really bad move. Okay, now he plays here, and this is the, this is the best move of the game. The move that's really, really, really boring. White wants to go here, take this, and get another queen. Okay? If, if white plays this, if, mm -hmm. what's black do? In fact, I'll play it for you. What does black do? By the way, black's winning here. Um, that's a blunder. It could have uh, queenie one check. Queenie one and here, this should take, resigns. Here. Yeah. Black's winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the engine says resigns is better than moving. Yeah, tough engine. Okay, now you don't want the guy to play queen e1, but you want to play rook d7. So what did white play? 
Um, King F1? Correct. The best move. Yeah, now black has no counterplay. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to queen. And black, you know, black can't do anything. So he tried, but he failed miserably at Yesipenko. E3. I missed somebody doing something. I heard it. Uh, Goblin is here, 100 cent to do's. You just got to 1,200. Good, good. Pin punch subscribe. Also good. Somebody check the followers. I'm too lazy to move my hands over here and type. Always retreat. Always retweet. Sorry about that. Always resubscribe. 99,985 followers. Yay. Yeah. Noah Penko. Yeah. During the broadcast, um, Danny, Daniel, Danya Naroditsky, he said, not only is Yesipenko playing, his brother plays chess too, Noah Penko. Okay. That's, I mean, that's like one of my jokes, but worse. <laughs> okay. Now, Magnus is so good at chess, he knows when to break my rules. Thank you, and Scowl. he did it with a heavy heart. You could see Magnus didn't want to do it. I was, I was doing commentary, mm -hmm. right? Now, he played E3, so his queen could move it on over, you know, and so forth. So Magnus played F3, which you should never do, and he stops all of Black's counterplay. Now, here, Black really surprised White by playing the winning queen takes F3 check, and Black wins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true story. 700 cents to do. Thanks. Hey. It's Flava Flav. Yeah. You should cap it. Nobody else is allowed to follow. Yeah. Okay. So he tried to get counterplay. He put it in H. And Magnus is like, whatever. And he's like, no, no, put it in H. And Magnus is like, yeah, yeah, put it in H. I'm going to make a queen. He kept putting it in H. If this was Bug House... What black's threatening lots of checkmates. Yeah. That king is trapped. Mm -hmm. Everything's checkmate. Okay? But it's not bug house. It's real life. Rook D seven. And then Yesipenko's like, I, I can't do anything. He doesn't have any he can't uh, yeah. He's gonna check and queen my pawn or whatever. So here he resigned. And that was like a very smooth victory for Magnus because Black did stuff that wasn't good, and the stuff that he did gave material away. And then he's like, oh, I don't have any material, darn. And usually super GMs don't do that unless they think something really bad is happening. In my opinion, which I can't prove, I believe that's what Yesipenko thought in this position. He said, if I don't do anything, this pawn's annoying and Black has no counterplay, so I'm going to go crazy and sack the exchange and sack a pawn and make the game all weird instead of just chill. And the engine says, no, queen here, pawn here, equal. White can't, white doesn't. Now, obviously, Magnus likes white. White has more space. Black has no counterplay. It's a Magnus position. So instead of, you know, going into that good night, he fought against the dying of the light, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's by the famous poet. There's actually five people wrote that poem. Most people don't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Dialon, 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 and Dialon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't believe me. You know why? God, this is one of my top five jokes ever. Ever. <clears throat> it really is. I just made up. Because she's a doubting Thomas. Uh, Dylan Thomas. Yeah, I think I did good there. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm going to give it to you. I mean, that was good. complicated. You spelled Dr. Seuss wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, the problem is this chat, you know, that, you know, they're just like, is Carrie going to take her shirt off? That's that. That's all they can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your Treo 100 cents to do. Now, I am thinking that, but I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Dr. Suez Canal. A man, a plan, a canal. Suez. Mm -hmm. Oh, Spencer won. No, oh, he, I, I was waiting for you to get, get to a stopping point. He did not win. That means he lost <laughs> to Bradley the Road. How do you know he didn't draw? I saw the sheet. Oh, he lost? The results sheet, and neither one of them, I had, he wasn't, he was there, and then he was gone. Yeah. Like a ghost. Yeah. And Lathrop disappeared, too. So darn. Yeah, we, that's not good. We love our Brad, but, you know, Spencer's. We don't love him that much. Not, yeah. not enough that we're happy to be Spencer. Yeah, right. <laughs> Is this a 12-hour stream? Probably. Yeah. Where's Karen from? Her mommy. 
She was born in Montgomery, Alabama, and she grew up in Dothan. Mm-hmm, Alabama. Yeah, and also she's lived everywhere. She's been everywhere, man. She's mm-hmm. lived in Philly, Boston. Did you live in Boston, Boston, or suburban Boston? I lived in Boston, Boston. Yeah? Right on Huntington Ave. And you also lived in New York, Pennsylvania. I used to go running. I used to run through the MIT campus. Yeah. What's funny is not only did Karen live in New York, Pennsylvania, so did Peter Giannatos. That's a lot of chess people who lived in New York, Pennsylvania. I didn't remember. I forgot that already. Yeah, well, he might have lived in a in I suburb, think but was, I think um, it, no, it, wasn't, it was next to it. It was uh, started with an H. Put it in H? I forgot. No, not Hiram, yeah. but so. yeah. yeah. He was near, though. He was very close to there. I had been to the place where he lived. What's Karen's favorite was. food? <laughs> Karen's favorite dish is this free appetizer you get before the food comes that you don't even order at the crossing in Clayton, Missouri. How did I do? You did it. All the names. You, you, agree, you agree with all that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what is that called? The Crossing. No, no. What's the name oh, of the food? Oh, the dish. I don't know. And they gave me the recipe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where the recipe is. Yeah. And I don't cook, but <laughs> I could cook. No, it's like a... It's it's not cheese, or is it? It's, it's a, cheese. Yeah, it's, it's a, something. It's, yeah, it's something. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, whatever it is, she likes it. Oh, you're in Lancaster? Yeah, we still live in um, York. 99,995. The, the red rose and the white rose. Which which chess player? Wait, what is it? Right. Which chess player? So which chess player only eats goat cheese? Uh, Guryev. No, oh. no, Magnus. <laughs> okay. Magnus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just Magnus. <laughs> I yeah. thought it was a real yeah, thing. Magnus. They got it. Yeah. Oh, come That's on. That's right. Yeah. I didn't know that was like a real thing. Stop the count. <laughs> How could it be a real thing? I'm insinuating no GM in the world eats except Gorev. How could it be not a joke? The other GMs are like, no goat cheese. I got distracted by the Lancaster, mm-hmm. the Lancaster yeah. connection. You like Karen's answer better? By the way, Gorev claims his whole life he's either vegan or vegetarian. You know, one of them. And then in Philly, at the buffet, there was just tons of meat on his plate. <laughs> and somebody called him on it. She said, aren't you a vegetarian? And he's like, meh. I mean, what? Yeah, he had meat everywhere. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah, I've never seen him eat meat, and I've eaten, I've eaten at restaurants with him. I've never seen him not be a vegetarian. But he was piling up the meat. I wonder what happened. So, well, he lost his last two games. That's what you get. Uh, okay. Last meal. Very impatient. <laughs> Who's the highest ranked vegan? <clears throat> That's a good question. It's probably somebody in the top 20. But yeah, I don't know. Vegan only. Ray, Ray Robson, maybe. There's probably people we don't know are vegan because, you know, there's a lot of people. Ray Robson, I think, is a vegan, yeah. Some Indian guy? Yeah. yeah most Indians are vegetarians, not vegans. Yeah. Also, some of the Indian vegetarians cheat a lot. Yeah, a lot of Indian vegetarians, uh, yeah, very suspicious. Uh, let's see, blah, 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 etc. Do you want me to bring the, all the results she's in? He was writing the tournaments. I couldn't bring them in. Yeah, yeah, when, you know, you get, yeah. This Indian vegetarian don't cheat none. I'll, 99,999. Yay. Yay. That's even better. All right, time for huge donations for no reason because no, I got to 100,000. Thanks, Forking Ryan. Followers on the stream. Somebody do it. Somebody do the exclam stats. I want to see. I want to see the hundred thousand. I don't want to see hundred thousand one. No, hundred thousand one. No, I missed the hundred thousand. Oh. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Thanks, um, old lawyer dude, for the ten subs. That's great. I'm gonna donate subs too because you know. Let's see. Let's give five. Yeah. The more we five subs to my to my community for a hundred thousand mm-hmm. followers. Soon we'll have 100,000 subs on YouTube and we'll have 10,000 followers on Twitter. That's also happening soon. Yay. Yay, thanks, Ben Feingold. You're the best. <laughs> so this is funny. There was a WGM woman, uh, Russian, who was on the stream with us at the end from the site. Mm-hmm. She's doing commentary like on some other site, like in Russian. And she played in the event and lost in round one. She's like 20, 2300. Mm-hmm. And I've never seen her before. She'd never seen me. But... She did call me Ben, even though it said Benjamin Feingold like three places. Mm-hmm. So she knew, you know, 
unlike some people. You don't know her name? She do. Uh, Dina, and then some Russian name. Oh, yeah, like ba Balenciaga. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not that, but yeah, She's right. She's pretty well known streamer. Yeah, but she knew I was Ben, even though, mm -hmm. you know, even though it said Benjamin everywhere. I forgot her Usually people don't know me though. if they look at all the tw Twitch. Yeah, Valenkai, Valenkai. yeah, it says, it says. Yeah, what's her stream name? Yeah, I don't I've know. I've seen her stream. Anyway, she, she, she was, she was good on the, the thing with, with cool. me and Danya. Yeah. So. Danya could have spoke to her in Russia, but then we would have been confused. Oh, this guy, I was right. Yeah. Belenkaya. Well, somebody else says No, no, Kaya. Kaya's wrong. It's Belenkaya. Is it Kaya? Yeah. Yeah, I remember there was no S. All right. Yeah. Either way, yeah. we love her. She played Rosen. Yeah, in fact, I'm not sure if it was her, but I saw on Twitter it might have been her. I didn't say it was her, but I made reference to it, and then she admitted it. She played ping pong with MVL. But I wasn't sure if it was her or somebody else. There was a video of it on Twitter. So I said, none of this matters. What about the ping pong? And if she said, what do you mean? Then I would have been in trouble. But she like talked about it. But yeah, she also played Rosen. Rosen's playing everybody there. Like they filming it and taking pictures and such. Yeah. I saw him on, this, on the chess stream taking a picture. Yeah. Dina and Rosen had some interesting blitz games. Yeah, I didn't see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rosen should wife her. I've never heard that uses like a verb. Wife her. Yeah. Harsh. Yeah, I think they'd be a good match. Let's start. We can match make them. Man, he should wife her. Yeah, yeah wife her is interesting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Back to whatever it is I was doing. Okay. <laughs> so this is this is the next game. Yesipenko versus Carlson. Now... Black lost this game, and this was the moment he lost, although it's a joke. He's been losing the whole game, Magnus. Wait, hang on one minute. Yeah. She never heard of the Stafford? That is pretty strange. Yeah. Yay, 100,000. He seemed offended. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is... but he's kidding. Oh, he's yeah. just joking. Rosen has two girlfriends that are tens. Very suspicious. I've never known him to date anybody. That's yet. correct. I bet he could yeah. certainly get, he's probably a very private person. Yeah. I'm sure he has plenty of life. That's common. Wife her up. I've never heard I've of never it. Heard it. Never heard it. <laughs> it ain't common here. Yeah. Uh, Trump is claiming that there were dumps on Ben's channel. No, no. <clears throat> okay. Now wa watch this. Are you watching? I'm watching. Okay. So here Magnus played a move I don't like. Uh, I'm gonna get back to this. <clears throat> Magnus is black. Okay. He played. Uh, maybe F6. Correct. Now, when he played F6, that is not a good move. The engine says that's terrible. Yeah. And me and Tanya were like, <laughs> frankly, ridiculous. Okay. Now, White's next move is a move you would never consider. You would never consider it. And when I show you he played it, you'll be like, why do you do that? And I'll be like, I agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't understand anything. You ready? You ready yeah. for White's move? I don't think you're ready. I'm ready. Queen A1. What? Uh, okay, I don't know. All right, now, now Black played the best move here, and he's back, into, he's back in the game. And it was the reason he played F6. And it's one of my favorite moves. But when I do it, I'm sort of forced to do it. Here Magnus had the idea, and this was first played against me that I remember by Anand in 86 at Oakham. And when Anand played this, he played it instantly, and I never thought of it. And now I've been playing it because I my night's on G6 a lot, because openings I play. And that's why Magnus played F6. He played the number one engine move, knight H8, because he wants to play knight F7 and win that rook. That's pretty sneaky. F6, yeah. knight H8 to F7. I play knight H8 all the time. That's because they play H5, and I have to play knight H8. Yeah. So this was very bad, Queen A1. Because, and F6 wasn't a great move, but after Queen A1, it's a great move, because he's... Who's going to see that? I play in NH8 all the time, and I still didn't see it. Okay, so he played the best move. Bishop B5. Now he has to win the game again. Knight, knight here doesn't work anymore, because this is attacked. If you trade bishops, I have the E6 square for my rook, so the rook's not trapped anymore. Now, the engine move, confusing everybody, ready to be confused, mm -hmm. is here. See, it cuts off this rook. And then if you play here, which looks obvious, now this rook's trapped. <laughs> I 
Anyway, the engine still likes white, but that's crazy. Like, it's all crazy tactics. Mm -hmm. He just took on b5. You can't take with the rook because your rook's hanging. So he plays rook e6. Swish and zook. Very good move. I wonder if Magnus saw that because it's such a good move. Okay, then takes with the rook. And now this is weak. This is weak. That's terrible. This knight's coming in. Passed pawn. And white's back to winning again. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I didn't want, usually I don't like to be disagreeable unless it's like, you know, Naroditsky hangs a queen or something. Naroditsky never hangs a queen, but sometimes Hess does. Hess, Hess blunders sometimes his analysis, like I do. But I don't want to say to Naroditsky, like, if Naroditsky says, I think the position's equal, and I think Black's winning, I don't say, you're an idiot, Black's winning. I'm thinking it. And here, maybe to keep the spectators interested, he was saying like, oh, this is a very tough and, you know, the game's not over yet and Magnus is hanging on. And all I was thinking was, what? I was just thinking like, Magnus can resign here. And if Magnus was white, everybody would say Magnus is killing him and Magnus is the best. But Magnus is black and they're like, oh, Magnus has chances here. No, he doesn't. This is the worst position I ever saw. But I just said like, yeah, okay. What? What? It I can't believe how bad Black's position is. Okay, a5 is correct. Now, when he played rook f8, we in unison agreed Magnus is a genius. The idea is if you take this, then I play knight d8 forking the rooks. Mm. That's really cool. Of course, you don't take this, but still. Okay, so he put it in h. He wants to get in there. She said knight d8. That's not very good. I mean, it doesn't matter. He's just lost. Yeah, he should have repeated, always repeat. Never play f3. I mean, black has no counterplayer, he's just lost. Down material and lost. Yeah, and this is really nice. Yeah, if you, he played here, and now we thought white only had one winning move. Wow, the second winning move is insane. The first winning move is sort of boring. This move also wins. Wow, and then if you take it, you go here. <laughs> and you're just taking all the pawns. Wow. All right, nobody's doing that. He played rook d6, the knight's trapped. Yeah, there's nothing to do now. You can't defend the knight. So you have to trade and go into this dead lost rook ending. So I thought white would play rook here. Rook takes pawn. Rook takes pawn. Rook behind the a pawn. Rook here resigns. Yeah, that's the engine line, is rook d7. Yeah, I mean, that's just, what, what's easier than that? So I said that on stream, like, white this, you just do this and you win. What's the problem? Now, it turns out everything wins, so it doesn't matter. He's up two pawns. He played this way, because this goes into winning kingdom pawn ending. So that's quicker. Yeah, every move wins here. Somehow, Danya was like, this wins, and maybe some other move wins. And I'm like, every move wins. What are you talking about? Yeah, now you have to go after this pawn. And the reason you lose is funny. King f5 is an important finesse. King takes g5 also wins, but yeah. Now here, if I queen and you queen, I said if, mm -hmm. then I go queen check, queen check, and take your queen. So black has to go back here and stop the pawn and then queen, but he can't do that. And when I say he can't do that, white really made sure he couldn't do it. He played king d6. So you can't legally stop that. And now Magnus resigned because this is all forced. They both saw the Fisher movie. Probably neither one saw it. And then check, and then check, and then win the queen. So after King D6, Magnus resigned. So that's the first rapid game in the World Cup that Magnus has lost since 2005. Now, you guys think Magnus is the greatest of all time, but I guarantee you, that Karen and I haven't lost a game in the World Cup ever, in slow or rapid. So I don't, why is, why is that so impressive? Terrible. Yay, 100,000 viewers. Yay. The more you donate, the more money we have. Not viewers, followers. Viewers would be even crazier. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for following. Okay, now this was crazy. Karyakin got outplayed, and now he's in trouble. And this is the last game of the match. If they draw this game, 
They go to like a five minute. This is like the last ten minute game. I wonder if I should kick people out real quick. If you want. You, I mean, let me just make sure you them. swear at them a lot too <clears throat> okay. and ban them. Well, I mean, there's just a, I don't think John's here anymore. I'll bet you John's here. And Karen disappeared. No. Ooh. All right. And then, yeah, read that to yourself. All right. Everybody's gone? Hang on a second. Ooh. I can't see it now. Ooh. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <Nope. Ugh. laughs> All right. So the opening and middle game worked out very well for MVL. And he's threatening this pawn. He's threatening this pawn. Queen here check looks annoying. And the engine says, like, it's really good for, for white. And Sergei's not the minister of defense for nothing. Why is he the minister of defense? Yeah. So white has a big advantage here. And even if black plays the best, white still has a big advantage. But you have to play the best anyway. Because if you don't, then you're in a lot of trouble. Now, I want to show you a funny line that didn't happen. Okay? Mm -hmm. Queen a5. That's the second best move according to the engine. Okay? And that loses because white has the trickiest trick that ever tricked anybody. Knight takes e6. The f pawn's pinned. Mm -hmm. And if you take the queen, then I go into the two pawn up endgame. Nice. So, yeah. Okay. So that's the second best move, losing immediately. Yeah. It's a tough position. Okay. So he played queen d5. That's the best move. Thanks, Trace Vector Decoder, for the sub. You're the best until somebody else subs. All right. Okay, so he traded, and he said, gift me the pawn, Yasser style, and white's up a pawn. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the engine says, white's up a pawn. Like, almost no compensation. Because you can't play rook b8 because it's defended. So... It's up a pawn. But black has some compensation because he has a pawn majority on the king's side. And he's like, all right, let's go. G5, bishop D6 is correct. Rook A7. You have to take the bishop on E7 because your pieces are all hanging. Okay. Rook, rook takes B7, attacking this and this. So he plays bishop A3. And then F5. And the engine's like, this is great for white. White's up a pawn, uh, the bishop is good, and black doesn't have any threats. So the engine's like, yay, go white. And what's funny about that is, Karyakin won this easily with black. So you just gotta keep fighting. You gotta take your chances and keep playing. And if MVL had won it, as the engine says maybe he should, he would have won the match. So he has a pawn up ending that he loses in eight <laughs> moves where the engine says he's up a pawn for nothing. Now, the reason he lost is, you know, MVL is not going to break my rules. He knows me too well. And the best move is F3. We have to stop black from clamping down with the pawns. So you play F3, you take on E4, you play king F2. And by trading pawns, black's pawns on the king's side aren't as important. And if, if you play this and take and they take with this pawn, now we have two passed pawns. So, okay, white's better in any case, but that was the best. Trace Vector Decoder gifted a sub, and so did Keith Mad. My favorite throwback uniform. What? English? 
I literally don't care. Okay, so he played king e2, which is fine. I, I have no complaints. Moving your king up in the end game. Rook h7, taking the h file. The engine still likes white. White's up a pawn. Bishop c5 is okay. F4. The engine says white's up a pawn. Good winning chances for white. And he played b4. And that gives away almost all of his advantage. He doesn't like that move. It wants to either play b3, c4 and try to get a passed pawn. Or rook g1 getting ready for rook h2. And in either case, it prefers white. Uh, thanks, Bach. You'll be Bach. He said I'm Bach. And thanks. Yeah, go uh, whatever you call it. The train. B4. You know, MVL's like, I'm going to make a queen. I'm MVL. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Rook H2. A4, double question mark. Okay. So the engine says it doesn't like this move. And now after Rook G1, white's slightly better, but it should be a draw. Because black's, you know, black's coming in here. But MVL is like, yeah, take my pawn, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna queen. I don't care. I literally don't care about this. And he did take. And then he played king f1. Now the problem is, uh, we want to play g4, and you could see, you know, this isn't working out. And king f1 is actually losing by force. Uh, maybe he's losing already. The, the the engine wants to play rook f1, but then it's you can't you know you're he doesn't want to defend he's trying to queen his queen side, mm -hmm. so instead of being solid and building his advantage, MVL made it a crapshoot. He's like you win the king side, I'll win the queen side. I hope I win, um, but the king side's first. I mean the king is here, so we're doing everything with tempo. <clears throat> and the problem with b5 is after knight a5 the knight's coming in, and this king can stop the pawns. So this is probably already winning for black. Very bad judgment from MVL. Mm -hmm. So you play king f1, f3, and this is really nice f3. Here's why it's nice. After the obvious b5, he played an absolutely brilliant move. Frankly, brilliant. This, this is great. And these are the moves super GMs overlook, as well as everybody else, because... They have nothing to do with the last move. And I've talked about this with all my students. When your opponent makes a move, what's it? When your opponent makes a move and you stare at that move, you're missing the rest of the board. And I've told this story many, many times. I don't know the rules of Go. I've been explained the rules of Go. I still don't understand it. And before you guys were born and before Go was invented, I played Go at a chess club in Columbus at this guy's house, Columbus, Ohio. And I didn't know how to play. I still don't know how to play. And he spotted me nine stone and I lost. That's like a queen spot in chess. Mm. And he said the reason I lost was when he went somewhere, so did I. I was always doing what he was doing. I don't know how to play, so I lost. He says when somebody spots you nine stone, when somebody goes there, you go the other place. They get their tour, you get your territory, but you're up nine stone. But instead, I was fighting with him. I don't know how to play, so I lost every fight, and I lost by, like, seven queens worth. And so when somebody plays b5 and you're a lower-rated player, all you think about is what b5 does. Okay, you have to think of the whole board. There's a whole chess board. So black ignored his knight. Mm. He's played e3. Now, if it's black's move, check. King e1, check. Rook takes rook and queen. So you, you, know, you got to take that. Now, if you play rook here, which also loses, now everything wins. E2 wins because you can't take the rook because I queen. And rook takes f2 wins even more. And even more winning. God damn. Okay. So in this position, after e3, you have to take. And the point is, now that this pawn has taken this, here comes my knight, and there goes checkmate. It's going to be checkmate. Yeah, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, or I'm going to go here. So I'm going to queen or checkmate you or both. The game's over now. Now, MVL tried, but trying is the first step to failure. There's two ways to stop the knight from coming in here. Rook d1 to d3, defending both, or bishop a3 to c1, defending both. 
Okay, he played bishop c, c, a3, I think. Yeah, so let's play rook d1, then knight c4. I wasn't even looking at e3. I was looking at rook right. h2. Right, so then rook d3, stopping checkmate. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, check, always repeat. See, I'm funny. And then mate. <laughs> okay. So you have to play rook d3. Mm -hmm. That's the point. Okay. And now you take, take. And you play knight b2, and the rook's trapped. That's funny, the rook's trapped. Mm -hmm. Man, the hype train died pretty quick. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> so, so MVL played bishop a3 with the same idea. Knight b3, threatening knight d2, winning. For example, takes. For example, knight d2. This is the only legal move. F2. And now it's tough to play white. Very tough. Because if you move your king anywhere, I queen would check. Mm -hmm. Either the queen's checking you or the rook is. And it's mate. Mate in three. So he has to play bishop c1. Uh, so he, he has to move his rook to, to d1 to stop knight d2 check. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really stop knight d2 check. So instead of letting him take this, he takes this first. And now MVL resigned, I believe. Yeah. Because now I'm going to check... And you can't play king e1 because rook e2 is mate. f2 also wins. And so if you just take and I win the exchange, that pawn's not dangerous. My king can stop it. You know what is dangerous? That. God damn. So, I mean, that was just beautiful. Karyakin's e3. Right? Because, I mean, it's just not even a move you look at. Yeah. And then after take, here comes the knight. And there's checkmate everywhere. This king's no good. This rook is the best rook ever. Two passed pawns, and you're getting mated. So MVL tried to like make it a pawn race, and he had an extra pawn. But not only did he lose the race, he's also getting mated because the bishop was did nothing. The bishop, you know, like if my bishop was here, okay, then you know, mm -hmm. then we both get a queen or something. But here, this bishop doesn't help at all. So he went from like a nice advantage to resigning in like eight moves. And if he had won that game, he'd be playing Shankland. That's the prize. You don't win any extra money. The prize for winning this match is playing Shankland. That's, you know. <laughs> By the way, the best prize was Fedoseyev. Yeah. Fedoseyev's opponents get lower and lower rated every round. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's possible. Yeah, everybody's playing 2,900 this round, and Fedoseyev is playing Tabatabe, who should have lost you know, yes, two days ago, or yesterday, I guess. Terrible. Uh, Rook h2 is the second best move instead of e3, also winning. Rook h2, put it in h. The reason it's winning is after king here, you, you, can, you, know, you can play e3. That, that's why it's winning. Always repeat. In this position, the engine actually plays king h1 and also winning for black, but not as winning. Then takes, and complicated. Takes this is what I would do. e3 and black's winning because after here I stop the pawn, but nobody's going to stop that. Also this. Man, harsh. Yeah, bishop just does nothing. The bishop's useless. Bishop was here. Okay, maybe. But it's like here is useless. But that's amazing. Like, Karyakin's a pawn down and ending in worse, and he just wins easily. Because, you know, MVL found the wrong plan. Those are the kind of positions you would assume Magnus would win with white. He wouldn't allow that counterplay. He would batten down the hatches and eventually, and that's what I'm saying. The people who lost in the World Cup, they played super aggressively when they could just chill. And they, they changed the position, they made a double edge, and it was it was wrong. That's that's the guys who lost. Hey, trying to learn how's it going? Shanklin could be Karyakin, just he's not the favorite to do so. Yeah. Anyway, as far as I know, Shanklin. Um, has, is the only player in the World Cup who hasn't lost a game. Nobody can beat Shankland. And then some. No. Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't you guys like Sam? Says Andre. The because I, I, whenever he comes over our house, which is often, Karen always makes some green eggs and ham. And he won't eat it. So we're like, come on, dude. All right. Now in this position, um, Black is completely winning. If you don't believe me, Karen can look at the engine evaluation and say Black's completely winning. Yeah. Right. And, you know, this rook is good. Put it in H. King is no good. Black's position is great. And once again, and we suggested this move, 
I mean, I'm also no good. Once again, Black, you know, the player who had a good position went roar instead of just building. Now, obviously, they both have no time here. The engine says after H4, um, Black is plus 1,000. You can't take the pawn because after this, the truth hurts, right? The, the engine announces mate and so forth. Um, yeah, it just says that white resigns here. White, white just can't do anything. Queen's trapped. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, when somebody's queen is trapped, you don't necessarily have to attack it because it's trapped, but it's hard to resist. So Grishuk played rook a1, which looks like it ends the game. Mm -hmm. That's double, triple question mark. Now Grishuk isn't even better. It looks like you win the queen and white resigns. So that's why Grishuk, Grishuk's in time trouble. If Grishuk had 10 minutes on his clock, he would have won this game. But truth hurts. Do you see what white did here? It's very tricky. Um, let me see. <laughs> Yeah, Grishuk must have thought, yay, I'm winning. And then at the next time he went, aw, truth hurts. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a hint. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. What am I doing to you now? You're covering my eyes. No, that would be covering your eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm interfering with you. Oh, okay. Um, all right, let me see. But, so let's see it. D4. Interfering with the queen's defense of the rook. Uh, and attacking the queen. So if you make random move, I either take your queen or I take your rook. That was hard for me to see. That is. Black didn't see it either. Mm -hmm. Okay, so black took the queen. That's correct. White, obviously, you know, could take the queen. But instead, he made a bad move. He did not take the queen, mm -hmm. which is equal. He played 97 check first. The engine doesn't like that. It doesn't like the knight e7 check first. Hmm. Okay, rook takes f3 is a bad move. He should take on a4. Yeah. Okay, he played here, but he's in time trouble. Okay, rook b4 is also a bad move. And then this is genius what he did. This is really nice. And the reason it's genius is he had to see it here. Yeah. Probably Grishuk thought everything's under control and it's time to take these weak pawns. Right. Right? And then he found a really, really nice move in this position. You can't mate him because the king has g5. He can't, like, sneak over here. And, man, all your pawns are hanging. <laughs> God damn. And so white's completely lost. Unless he plays the move he did, then he's equal. And we were surprised he found it. But I guess, you know, that's why the guys were 27.50. DJ... Kato E or something, whatever. Something. Mm, I know. Yeah, he played knife I, f5 check. I also see that. Because if you take it, yeah, then it's then it's oh. pandemonium over here. Okay, and I then, saw that one. Okay, but you don't take it. Mm -hmm. You have to you move your king. Now you can't play king g5, because then I check, the king has to go here, I guess. And then now white's winning. White's gonna mm -hmm. white's killing it. Okay. So you have to take the pawn and now check and you take on g7. So now it's a draw. When I say it's a draw, white won, but it should be a draw, but there's no time on his clock. Okay, so this is all correct. Always repeat. Now, mm -hmm. the problem with king f7, hoping for the repetition, is I go here and you lose your bishop. You can't stay on your bishop. Yeah. So you have to move the bishop. Bishop f7, rook f6. And now there's one move that draws, and I think this is where he blundered. I think this is where he blundered. Uh, no, no, no. He played the right move here. You have to stop e6. So he played rook b6. Yeah, now he blundered. But again, they have seconds on their clock, so I'm not blaming anybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Rook takes is correct. I thought that was a blunder. It's not. Right. Yeah, this is actually all correct. Yeah, I thought he was losing here, but he's not. Yeah, this is the position... 
where Danya said black only has one move and nobody is playing this move. Mm -hmm. Right. So when the engine says it's equal, that's because the engine plays perfect every move and nobody's drawing this position. Only the engines are drawing. Yeah, the best move is h4. Nobody's playing h4. You're trying to get your pawn over here and distract white from, you know, like winning. Mm -hmm. It also says king here draws with repetition. But he took that because, you know, I got this passed pawn, I got this passed pawn, right? And that just loses. And then h6 check. And you have to play king f8 here, but he played king e6. Wait, can you show me how... Go back and move the pawn. This one? Yeah. Yeah. I can't visualize all that. Yeah, the, the, knight, the knight's not going to attack you if the knight's busy stopping this pawn from Okay, well, let's do a few moves. So take the pawn. All right. Right? Yeah, now you can't play knight h6 check, so now we take this. Okay. That pawn doesn't really matter for black winning because it's easily stopped. Mm -hmm. This pawn, now you're talking, right? That's a pawn. Uh, okay. And if it was white's move, white wants to play knight h6 check, but h4 stopped him from doing that. It gained a critical tempo. Now if you take this, I take this. And now this this one's queening. Now somehow this is a draw, but I would assume somebody would win. The engine says it's a draw, but I mean this one's queening. Yeah. So but white's drawing anyway, because the engine says so. All right. Okay, nobody's playing H4. Nobody's doing that. Why okay. did you say it was so obvious? No, 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 it was not obvious. It, it was obvious. It, like it was obvious system. that nobody was gonna do oh, it. Okay. So King F8 is best. Now that's a hard move to play because of e6, god damn. Nobody's playing king f8. Now king f8 may lose, but it's better than king e6. And king e6 is, you know, no time on your clock, you play king e6, you're blocking both of the pawns. Mm -hmm. King f8's crazy with no time. Unfortunately, this wins immediately. It's unfortunate. Now in this position, if you play king f8 and the guy plays f7 like he did in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Now, black's actually winning. Bishop here, stopping the king. And then here we come. And the knight can never check the king so because the knight's two squares away diagonally. That's the worst. Like, if you could cheat and go here, then you're like, knight g6 is mate. You can't get to g6. So if I cheated and played here, here, and then e6, you take on e6, white can't bust through that. And black's queening. So, so king f 8s the best move. But he played here, and now this just wins. Because the king's not on f8, you have to stop him from queening. If the king was on f8, it is stopping him no, from wait, queening. No, wait, go back. What yeah. were you saying about the diagonal? To... When the knight is two squares away okay. diagonally from any square, yeah. it takes forever to get there. I didn't know that. Yeah, let's say your knight's here. We've talked about it, but it was before it. you were born. I know there are all these different knights. The, the knight can never get here. It takes a thousand moves. Okay, so yeah. two squares diagonal. Yeah, then you can't get there. So king f8's right, but who's playing king f8 letting the guy play e6? Who's doing that? Right. And after this, you have to play king e7. And if you would play king f8, you know, f7's not dangerous. Your king's on f8. Now you have to play king e7, e6. You can't take on e6 because I queen. And now it's just completely winning. He tried this, but trying is the first step to failure. And then he resigned. Mm -hmm. King here, check, queen. Yeah. So that game could have gone either way. When I started the game, Grishuk was completely winning. Then it was a draw, and then he lost. And that's that's sort of how MVL lost to Karyakin. But MVL wasn't completely winning. He was just a pawn up and so had a good position. So the guys who made it through, it wasn't easy. Duda and Karyakin, they had tough opponents. And I'm shocked that Grishuk lost this match. But if somebody's going to beat Grishuk, Duda's a good candidate. Duda's pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yay. 100K. Thank you, Aunt Podine. Who's going to donate 100,000 cent to Deuce for my 100K? It's been done. <laughs> it's a really ugly spinning thing. It's, it's some yellowish color. Or dollars would be fine. Well, then we the, the pay, you know, <laughs> they, they wouldn't allow it, you know. They'd shut down all the accounts. Yeah. Okay. Now, I just wanted to show this game to show the super GM technique that most people don't have. White's up a pawn. Mm. White has a great rook. And he made this look like it was the easiest thing that's ever happened in his life. He made this look like he was three queens up. Black couldn't do anything ever. 
Okay, so Black tried, but he failed miserably. He played a4. He wants to double, he wants to, you know, get rid of the, and, and Fedosey was like, okay, e5. Remember, these moves are hard to see because a4 was played, so everybody's staring at the a4 pawn. And he's like, e5, where's your bishop going? And Black's like, I don't know, me alone. So he plays there. Now the bishop's no good. Then he takes on a4. The, if he plays a5, the knight controls it. If he plays rook here, I can play rook d4. Everything's defended. What's funny is when this pawn moves up, usually black wants the rook behind the pawn. Mm -hmm. There is no behind the pawn. There's a pawn here. Like you can't, yeah, terrible. Okay, rook c8, rook d4, never play f6, rook e4. Look at that, untouchable, right? You can't, right. Now, the winning plan isn't to like queen the a pawn immediately. That's what the weak players do. They're like, ooh, let's do that. Then the guy takes your a pawn. You're like, aw. Okay, the winning plan is to improve white's worst piece. What's white's worst piece? The rook, the knight, or the king? Um, the, which is worse, the rook? The yeah, which of these pieces needs to be improved? Um, the rook. Close. Oh. I'll give you two more guesses. <laughs> I guess the knight then. Okay, one more guess. The king? Yeah, you have to move well, your I king up king, in the end game. But I didn't think it was time yet because there's still so much material on the board. There's, always, there's no material on the board. It's a rook and knight against rook and bishop. I'm to move my king out when there's a spot. There's no material on the board. All right. two, two pieces against two. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so these are perfect. These are better than perfect. You I can't go to the, the C file. Right. You can't go to the B file. You can't go here. So once the king gets over here, we win. I didn't really think the rook was that great. Yeah, this rook's great. That's well, a great rook. It can't be attacked. Why is now that the knight moved? Well, it was defending the knight. That was great. Stick, all yeah. right. I was doing much. Yeah. Here comes the king. Here comes the king. Mm. Here comes the king. Here comes the king. Now, this is very funny. Mm -hmm. Here, black makes a really bad blunder, and then the gawking rabble in the chat are like, how come when I play, nobody blunders against me and you're all mad? He's dead, dead, dead lost. So the blunder doesn't really matter much. So after this check, okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. If it was white to move, which it's not, mm -hmm. but if it was, what should white play? It's not, but if it was. Uh, Artie, farty, pan, skiff to the Nine, sub. 96. Right, now this guy who's playing in the World Cup and winning every match, he should see knight d6, right? Yeah, I mean, probably a long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he played here because he was afraid of this pawn. Uh, see, he stopped the pawn and then check and he resigned. But, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's completely lost because the king's getting involved. So this pawn is going to win. Yeah, the king over here, no good. Here, now we're going to make a queen. Now you can see the engine evaluation. White's up plus one billion. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking that, too. Here comes the judge mm -hmm. when he said that. I mean, look at that. Black missed that. That was the most fun he ever had. But white was in total control. Black had no counterplay. White's pieces couldn't be moved from their positions. It looked great. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's lost anyway. He can resign. But his pawn's hanging and rook c4 and queen and your king can't get over here. And terrible. All right. So this game has one billion tactics. I skipped the beginning of it. Okay, look at this crazy position. And... I was saying before the game, Fedosev doesn't know how to play for a draw. He won that game. We just looked at it. Now he needs to draw, and he wins the match. He doesn't know how to play for a draw. He just knows how to play like a lunatic. So he played like a lunatic, okay? So, like, this isn't really drawn. This is just crazy position. White played bishop takes c6 because his bishop is hanging. Mm -hmm. And then he played knight h6 check. Bam! Because the pawn's defending the knight. Uh... But it doesn't win, it's just like super complicated. Mm -hmm. You can actually take or move the king. He decided to move the king, okay, which is fine. Then he put his knight back. Okay, now black made a very, very, very bad move. Very bad move. But okay, the position is too complicated. G6, moving the pawn in front of his king and undefending his knight on F6. Very bad move. Beside the king. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, but so, 
So the engine wants to play either c2 or bishop a3 and try to, you know, get where black's advantage is. Bishop g5, good move, attacking the knight. And now white played a fantastic move. We knew what the right move was because the engine said so. And we were like, who's going to play that move? Then he did. Mm. And again, it's one of those things where you're focused on one side of the board and you forget the rest of the board. Terrible. This looks like white's trying to checkmate black because white's trying to checkmate black. But he played the only really good move in this position, d4, threatening d5 with advantage. Mm -hmm. Also attacking this pawn. That d4 is the best move and now white has a big advantage. Okay, takes is correct. Knight takes is correct. The queen is attacked. The queen moved. Okay, now he played knight gf5, which is an excellent move. First of all, it defends the knight. That's actually the most important part of the move. Because the engine also says this is good. The point is, if we defend the knight and we win the c-pawn, black's counterplay is over. But he's like, all right, I'll checkmate my opponent and I'll win the c-pawn. Because that c-pawn's pretty good. So... Normally in these kinds of positions, when white's in a must win, which he is, and black is in a must draw, black is like, damn, this position's too complicated. I'm getting mated. My, but it's Fedoseyev. Fedoseyev's like, yay, all the pieces are hanging and it's insane. He's Fedoseyev. He doesn't play for a win, draw, or loss. He just plays like Fedoseyev. He doesn't know what's happening around him. He's just like, yay, chess, rawr. And that's how you play good chess is you play good chess. That's all he cares about is really interesting chess positions. And he's like, I'm better than everybody at these. And he plays faster. So he's right. Okay. Bishop takes f5. Pawn takes f5. And the, here's the idea, Karen. Mm -hmm. The queen is defending f7. Okay. So you have to take the knight. The knight's hanging. The c-pawn's hanging. And now... Black's up a knight. And the reason white did that is because he goes check and then queen f7 check and wins the rook. That's why you have to look at the whole board. Okay, so now white's winning. White's up an exchange. Black's pawns are all isolated. Black's king is less safe than white's. And it's a must win game. And the engine says white's completely winning. Right? Mm -hmm. Fedosev crushed his opponent here. Like if I lost this position to Fedosev, I would just think, yeah, I'm no good, he's good, and I lose no matter how winning I am. But this guy's pretty good. This guy beat Andraken 2-0 in the tie breaks. And Draken was lucky to get to the tie breaks. Right? Black destroyed White in this position. This is completely winning. Every move wins for White. Okay. So he played knight e5. That's a good square for his knight. Rick d1's a good move. Queen b4 is good. Queen c2 is good. Yeah, and now, now White started faltering. Yeah, white started playing badly here. Bishop c1's the best move. Crazy. Always retreat. Then that pawn's not really important. He played bishop e3, which is still winning. Rook f5. Queen e2's not good. a5. King h1 is not good. Queen c4. Queen c4 is like the most genius move ever. I would never think of the move queen c4. Like, I'm trying to queen my pawns. I'm down in exchange for nothing. Why am I trading queens? What? But yeah, if they trade queens, these pawns are looking pretty good. So this is actually the best move. And then White had no time on his clock because Fedo Save moves instantly every move. And he made the worst move in chess history, losing the game. And here, it's already very difficult to win. Like Bishop C1 and Rook D4 are the best moves. Uh, but he, he mixed the two best moves Rook d4, bishop c1. He played bishop d4 losing. Now he's lost. You can see why he did it. The knights attack, the pawns attack, the queens attacked. And so it looks good. And in fact, this move wins if black doesn't play the winning move, which white missed. Which Fedosev have played instantly. So black to play and win. Okay. <laughs> see. I guess David Packman's here. Have you weighed on the burglary of Levy's apartment? No, I, I wasn't there at the time. Wait, wait. I have alibis. 
Yeah. So the Bochess sisters are in New York, and there's videos of them playing like chess outside with Levy. Okay. And then Levy's apartment was robbed. Oh, no. So everybody just assumes it was the boat. No, they don't assume that. <laughs> so somebody that knew they were... Uh, I don't know if it's related. Me. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, uh, I didn't yeah. hear about that. Yeah. Um... Actually, they didn't take anything, but Levy was winning a game online, and he ended up losing, and he just said, I was robbed. So that it's it's semantics, really. Yeah, I don't know the winning move. Okay, now, you see how the rook is defending the bishop? Yes. So he played C2, and th the truth hurts. I wasn't ever going to get that. The truth hurts. Well, I mean, push your past pawn on the seventh. I just yeah. wasn't looking at that. And the reason it's hard to find is after this, you're staring at that. You're like, wow, there's a lot There's a lot happening here. That's what I look Then you just ignore all of that and play C2, and black's winning. Game's over. Yeah, if you play rook D2, you're letting the guy queen. If you let him take, that's not good. Mm -hmm. So he... Now, here's the funny part. If you take the queen, I have a very funny Zwischen Zug. It's, I don't take this queen, I make a queen. <laughs> Confusing the audience. Okay, so he played rook c1, and now black has two pieces for a rook. And what's funny is about this position, is if you look at the final position, this looks like black just crushed white. This is the most crushing position ever. But it's not true, it's just, that's, you know, he blundered in time trouble. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, so Fetis say I've won the tie break 2-0. So he gets to play. Wow, that's exciting. He plays Tabata Bay, so he's a big favorite, obviously. Well, that's, you know, those are fun games to watch. Right, but the funny thing is it's Fedoseyev, and he needs a draw to win the match, and he plays like a lunatic. Mm -hmm. And really quickly, too, because that's what he does. So now what happened with them getting ro uh, burgl burglarized? I guess rob robbery, that means with a weapon. Robbery so you means... you mean burglarized, burgled. Yeah, robbery means it's you and the other person, and burglary means you're not there. Oh, I thought robbery meant you had um, there was a weapon involved. I could be wrong though. I think if I go up to you and say, Maybe "Give me your money," and I don't show a weapon, right? Robbery. If I say, "Give me your money," and give it to me, I have a weapon. That's still robbery. Okay, okay. But I think if you're I right. if I take something, that's burglary. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Burgled. Okay. Yeah, he was burgled. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, threat of force. Okay, maybe that's it. I mean, I don't think it was me. I was streaming at the time. What do you mean it was one of my days off? But, yeah. Yeah, you could rob, yeah, you could rob someone yeah. with no way. Yeah, we came to that conclusion, yeah. Well, that's a bummer. I've been burgled and robbed. <laughs> yeah. At gunpoint. Yeah, and somehow nobody's ever robbed me. I don't know why. I mean, you know, easy to rob. I got mugged. Thing. I got mugged another time. Yeah. I ran. Mm -hmm. And I ran. Man, Fedoseyev's going to be tough against anybody. Fedoseyev's tough. Okay. So this is the most heartbreaking thing that's happened in the history of the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Marcherosian won with Black the first game. And this is the second game. These are slow games. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is the game that doesn't end. Now, Black has a huge space advantage, but he actually can't win. And we actually had him on the show today, and he said yesterday, referring to this game, he thought after d4 he was winning because he forgot white doesn't have to take it. <laughs> He's like, d4, I win. If pawn takes, king takes, and I'm going to win. King's going to come in. Okay. The thing is, even though d3 looks good, god damn, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it doesn't do anything. It's just a blockade. White's like, whatever. So white just does nothing and it's a draw. Yeah, you can't win. After king e1, Tabata Bay's like, oh, this is a draw. I can't win. I can't do anything. White just moves his king around. Yeah. And he can't win. If you play d3, I move my king around. There's no way to get in. So this is just a draw. Everybody knew it was a draw. And Hike is like, yay, I'm playing in the semifinal, or whatever, quarterfinals and so forth, right? And so... Tabata Bay is like, oh, well, and just starts moving around. White, white literally isn't doing anything. Okay. And then after here, white made a nine question mark move. Nine. By not moving, it's a draw. There's no threat. We could just play king d1. And moving the anywhere also draws. There's no threat. 
the king of pawning is a dead draw, the king the king can't enter anywhere. Mm -hmm. The king has nowhere to go. So just king d1 draws, knight b1, knight doesn't matter. Draw knight fc4. He played the only move that loses. He took, that just loses immediately. And at some point in the next three moves, he realized it. And he, I mean, you've never seen anybody so forlorn. Because he's like, he's in, he's in the... He's in the next round by doing nothing. Yeah. And he's been doing nothing. And then he decides, oh, let's go here. Okay, and it loses because now there's no G-pawn here. Right. So, walk on. Come in. Right. And you win by, it's lucky that you win. It is lucky. Okay, it's check. And then you play D3. And now we, we go here. And obviously, when the king goes to G2, we push the G-pawn. Mm -hmm. And if the king goes to G2 and the king's on E1... You can't take the F pawn because I queen, but you win by one tempo in a very lucky way. There's nothing white can do about it. Okay. So you play king e1, mm -hmm. and now if king g2, you're not threatening the pawn, but you can play d2 check. So you have to take. And then here, king g1 wins, and the reason it wins, he resigned here, is in this position, you play queen g2 check, and the king upon an a win. And then you just win this pawn. And then you shoulder him out. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. So knight takes f3, it loses immediately. And any other move does not. I mean, I, I mean, this lose. And if you, if you lose on purpose, you can lose. But yeah. I mean, this, just, this loses by force. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like, if I was white, I don't know if he didn't see that this is coming in. Or, see, if he saw both sides queen... I guess if he saw both sides queen here, since queen g2 is the only winning move, maybe he just missed it. Maybe he thought king g2 would be played, and you can't play queen g2 check. So I don't know. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean, in like this position, he realized he was losing, and he was, I mean, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. He didn't see, oh, he said that? He didn't see king g2? Or you're just, you're just guessing that. Yeah, but here's the thing, okay? If king if king g1 didn't exist and king g2 was played and it's a draw, you still shouldn't do this. You're relying on 5, 10 moves of calculation to draw instead of just making any legal move you want in drawing. There's no winning plan for black. Move my king. You can't win. The king can't come in. So, like, changing the position when this just draws is that's very bad. Very bad. There's a, there's a lot of blunders in this tournament. The players have no time. Yeah. Yeah, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does knight c4 draw? Yeah. Any move draws. Just, that, that doesn't draw. This draws, this draws, etc. Black doesn't really have a winning plan here. You know, white, white moves his king back and forth. Taking does nothing. I take back. And then my king back and forth. You can't win. The only way I tried to win just loses. The way to try to win with black is to sack your knight here and play king c4. You can preface that by trading or playing d3, but that just wins for white. So why do you think he took, was he like showing off or thinking? Well, he's not showing off. He thought, it was, he thought it was a draw. He, he thought, thought that was the quickest way to get a draw. He thought that was a draw. Wow. Because yeah. I would have been worried about that. He had lots of time and he, yeah. Over there. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of mistakes, but that mistake cost him many, 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 many thousands of dollars. Many. I mean, I technically, it could have cost him the world championship, but probably not. I mean, yeah, that's that's a blunder. Like the guy's moving his knight around, you know, black is, and then you take it and lose. God damn. Because mm, I, I mean, I, I think it's obvious he can't get. Sand. Yeah, they're saying they're saying he took five minutes on this and he had forty three minutes on his clock. Yeah. See, this move changes the position. So if you're doing that, you have to be right. You can't yeah. be like, oh, I miscalculated. Yeah. Oh no, my knight. You can't. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. See now, because of that game, this game existed. <laughs> Otherwise, this game wouldn't exist. This was the playoffs today. Same guys. Okay. This position's crazy, like Fox News, right? The queen is attacked. White made a big mistake here. Uh, thanks, resign it, says Steinitz. 
Um, somebody else did something and I ignored them. Katanka subscribe, thank you. And I guess maybe that's it. Okay, now in this position, okay, I don't like saying Trump, but what's Black's Trump? Look at everything Black has. What's the one thing that's gonna be there and it's looking good? It's, it's what White has to worry about. I mean, when Black's attacking White's queen. Right. But in the long run, yeah. why is Black okay here? What's good about Black's position? What do you like? Um, what's good about it? Mm -hmm. You know what's good? You know what's really good? Well, Basky's, Riley's basketball dream. Uh -huh. Hello, the By the way, when we were on break today, the, the, one of the higher-ups at Chess.com came on to talk to us, and he asked if we could be more energetic. I've never been asked to be more energetic ever by anybody ever. I said that too. They did ask you? Yeah, both of us. Right. Yeah, well, Naroditsky like overslept and they had to wake him up. But, oh. but I mean, so he was, he's sick too. Naroditsky is ill. He might not do it tomorrow because he's sick. He's been sick uh, for days. You know, he's at a chess camp with 50 kids. So, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, this pawn. Uh. That's a passed pawn. The rook's behind it. Uh -huh. So the right move for white is queen a1. That way you're keeping this you know, open here and the pawn can't queen. But queen a1 is weird. Only Yesipenko would play that. Remember when he played it? Okay. Yeah. He mm -hmm. played queen d2. Notice the bishop is attacked. Mm -hmm. So black played bishop e8 because the bishop's attacked. And then today we told him, said, hey, because this was the same day, we said, by the way, you could play a4 here. And then after this, you could play a3. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And the problem with this move is you get checkmated. By the way, this threatens white's checkmating. So if you don't see black's mating white here, you just this is the end of your analysis. White's winning, white's up a piece, and white's threatening mate. But black mates first. And then g3, this is mate. And as my kids would say, also wins the queen, and it's mate. And if king here, we have this mate. If you don't play queen a2, black has a very simple plan. God damn. These pieces aren't really stopping it. So the engine says black's winning here. So white actually can't take the bishop on d7. If black thought his bishop wasn't attacked after that, he would have played that. Push your pawn. Okay, and the engine says after this, probably black's winning, probably. But he played bishop e8. Now we're back in the draw zone. g3 stopping that trick. Okay, and black is still like equal or better until, you know, King h8, I think, is bad. Yeah, okay. So in this position, queen g7 loses immediately, and white blunder. They're in time trouble. Mm -hmm. And we showed him We showed him this move, and he went, oh, my God. He could have lost this game right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So rook e7, which is very hard to find, it makes the rook good, but that's not the point. The point is we're threatening this. And once you play that, black resigns. Because the white queen on a1 is going to do stuff to you. Like if you take the rook, I play rook takes queen and then discover double, triple checkmate. Yeah, so th this is winning and there's no, no defense to it. So the engine says white's up plus 1,000. Just this, threatening this, and that's it. There's no, there's no analysis. This is the best move because you're getting out of this pin. And then rook g6 still wins. Maybe some other move wins too. No, rook g6. The point of king h7, which you'll like, Mm -hmm. Is now I have the h8 square for my queen. <laughs> Otherwise, the yeah. Why would I like that? Yeah, because the funny queen here, queen. That's uh -oh. funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and 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 you yeah. know neither player noticed that. And pause the chat. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pausing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a lot of these games that were in the tie breaks today, people were losing and they won. People were drawing and they lost. You know. And so Ricky seven wins. Like, look at the engine evaluation, plus a million. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he played rook d5 because he didn't see rook e7, rook g6. Okay. Never play f6. No, okay. And this, this is funny. This is a blunder, right? Mm -hmm. And queen here wins and queen here does not, which is funny. It's like, aren't these the same move? Why would one win and one doesn't? And the reason is, which is what happened in the game. You'll see. Okay. So knife f5. Always play knife f5. Rook c2. 
knight e7. Now, you'll notice knight e7 attacks the queen. Mm -hmm. So if black had played queen h7 here, he wouldn't have that tempo, which he needed to draw the game. So this move wins, and this move does not win. But there's no time on the clock. So you just you make a move, your queen's hanging, you have to defend this pawn. So he picked the wrong move. Okay, queen takes rook. And now this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Here, <clears throat> you have to play queen h7 because mm -hmm. there's no other legal move. And now it looks like black just wins. If you, you take, I take, this rook comes here, and white's getting checkmated and black's queening. There's no checks. You can't move the queen off of b1 because this is made. So I go here, and I go here, and I go here. Yeah, it resigns. And you see the engine plus 1,000 mm -hmm. for black. And after this, white has a forced draw, which I suggested without an engine. Crazy. <coughs> Normally, you take a queen with check, mm -hmm. but not here because it loses. Knight g6 check. If you take the knight with the queen, that's illegal. Take with the pawn, then we have f7 check. Mm. And if you block the check, f8 checkmate. Mate, because it's pinned. Everybody's confused, especially me. So you can't take the knight. So you have to play king g8, and it's a perpetual. Oh, I see. You can't play king here, because now you, now you lose, because I'm winning mm -hmm. your queen. So the game ended like this. Nice. That's now that's a chess game. Mm -hmm. That game wouldn't have happened if Marcia Rosian had won that had drawn that night pawn ending. We'd never have seen this crazy game. So it was good for chess fans that Marcia Rosian lost that dead drawn position. So we saw this totally insane game, which ended in a perpetual where both sides were winning. Man, chess is hard. <laughs> yeah. Frankly, ridiculous. Okay, now this is something that always bothers me. When I'm playing chess and my opponent is good and he captured and I recapture, if I have more than one recapture, I'm always like embarrassed I'll play the wrong one. Like, you took that way. What's wrong with you? Right? And here, I don't like the way the black recaptured. This is the next game. This is the last game of the match. Okay, okay. this is all tied up. So you could take with the bishop, the queen, or the pawn. Mm -hmm. Now, I like passed pawns, so I would take with a pawn. If you don't take with a pawn, you don't have a passed pawn. You know, white's playing over here, and I'm trying to get a passed pawn. Okay, but he didn't do that. He took with a bishop. Okay, that's okay. H5. And the thing is, in a 10-minute game, this might have been a 25-minute game now that I think of it. Yeah, 25-minute game, it's hard to play black here because the guy's trying to mate you. Mm -hmm. And the counterplay, it's very slow in coming. Right, and white's already attacking. So even though the engine says it should be a draw and white's better, black collapsed like immediately. Okay, queen e7, eh, eh. Queen g3, this pawn's getting a lot of pressure. And f5 is just a blunder. King h8's the best move, getting out of this pin. Yeah. And f5, this pawn became very strong. He retreated the bishop, and this is just, you know, this is just permanently good. So this was a very important decision that changed the nature of the game, and it was a bad decision. And white didn't really do anything. White just built up his position because he's got this, and this, is, this doesn't do anything. That's, you know, he's trying, but he's failing miserably. And gh is, is also a bad move. The engine doesn't like the move queen b2, because it's allowing queen c5 check and the queen can come in. So that's also a bad move. Yeah, and now white's just winning because of e6. Now everything is finally, you know, now we're doing well. And the problem with taking, I don't think he took on e6. No, the problem with taking on e6 is I play queen e5, threatening the bishop. You can't play rook e8 because it's, it's hanging. Mm -hmm. So you have to play rook d6. And now, rook e3, rook g3, Papa John's. Total domination. There's nothing you can do. And the reason rook d1 doesn't work is bishops go backwards. That's actually hard when you're analyzing the position. Otherwise, I could play rook check and queen check. Yeah. So you can't check, you can't undefend your bishop, and you can't get checkmated. 
So position's really bad. If you play queen here, pitting the rook, king h2. Unpitting the rook, and then, then you're losing. So after e6, he can't take it. So he played h6. Now, if it's white's move, white plays bishop f7. And if king here, checkmate. So he played h6. So, so, so after bishop f7, he has an escape square. Okay, so he plays queen here, attacking this, defending this a little more. He defends it with his rook. Check. Again, this is the win you got plan. You just you know, you're just coming in to get him. So he, yeah. And this this ending's winning. I mean, rook rook e three I think is quicker. Yeah, rook e three is better to just do this. But okay, this is a winning end game. So because this pawn's too good. There's no, you can't stop the pawn. You can try. And the reason you can't stop the pawn is this gains a tempo on your rook. So if you try to go here, here, or here, here, th this attacks your rook, and then I queen. So you give up the exchange, and you, you block the pawn. But okay, easy win. White takes all the pawns. Yeah, and then he resigned. Here comes the king, and yeah, it's easy. So that was that was the final game of the match. Those games shouldn't have happened. Martyrosian should have drawn that knight and pawn ending. And then we got these two crazy games, and he's out. And I mean, I, I mean, he's going to be upset for forever. Like, the rest of his life, he's going to be like, how did I play knight takes knight on f3? I could have been the world champion. Man, <laughs> truth hurts. Okay, and then we had uh, the game that I won. Yay. Did you see the game that I won? Did I show you? Were you here? Um, I don't remember if you were here. Well, The game I won today I against COVID. Yeah. Yeah. I was here for that. Oh, you saw when I analyzed? Yeah. Mm. Very good. And that was good timing because okay. I'm on Chess TV another one minute. So we actually got 100,000 followers. Hooray! Yay. You guys are the best. I'm not sure what you're the best at, but something. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, I'll be... At, tomorrow's Wednesday and Thursday. I do the whole stream with possibly Danya. But if Danya's sick, then they'll get either Hess or Wrench. I, well, we'll get Wrench. Wrench is on vacation. So probably Danya. If Danya doesn't feel like doing it, then Hess. Um, but definitely me. And I guess it's possible... There will be times when I do it by myself because, you know, Danya's sick and S is busy. I don't know. Um, but I'll do the full days. Then on Friday, Ifan is before me. Then I come out 11 a.m. Eastern and I have to leave at 1 and go to the airport. So if the games aren't done by 1, I got to leave anyway. Then I guess Karen will take over, I guess. <laughs> and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Ben and Grishuk. Well, Grishuk's not, uh, yeah. Pony Labyrinth subscribed. Hooray. Anand is doing August 4th, 5th, and 6th, unless he changes his mind. But that's, that's the plan. Yeah. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern, and we run a little before that, you know. Hey, I'm Ben, Danya, et cetera. Mm -hmm. All right. So who, who do I, you know, who do I do stuff to? It's going well, Kingpin. Let's see. I'm thinking two. I'm thinking or four. Either I, one. Two or four. I like two. Yeah, I like four. All right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I like them all. Yep. John, subscribe. Thanks for following. 100,000 followers. 100,000 followers. Everybody's got them, right? Yeah. So Will Smith said. <laughs> yeah. Go, everybody. The Don't get sick. I can tell you about my gunpoint robbery next time. Mm -hmm. And I have a story about how I cussed people out. Yay. I didn't get to tell my cussing out mm -hmm. person story. 100,066 followers. Tonight. I almost came to blows with somebody. Mm -hmm. Almost. But I didn't. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. See you guys tomorrow Bye. morning. And I guess I'm having a class tomorrow. Did they make a flyer? Yeah. So class tomorrow on Zoom, 7 p.m. Eastern. Be there or kindly be square. Mm -hmm. It's on blunders. So maybe your games will be featured. No, it's just Grandmaster blunders. So your games will not be featured. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye, Bye everybody.